starting started for us and we'll just uh we'll just take it from there so pretend there's this the most awesome intro you ever heard in your life which the best intro ever the green what... woodworker doing stuff <laughs> green that's what do, i should have that's what do, i should have do. done that would have been awesome <laughs> All righty, here we go. Now I gotta stop laughing. I feel like you do when Mark starts talking. Oh my God, it's so bad. It's so bad. Self straight. You can't. You can't. Uh... Every single time it's supposed to be my turn to talk and something serious, Mark always screws it up for me. Now I can't get this smirk off my face, man. <laughs> you just gotta start. Just, you just gotta embrace it. That's, that's kind of what I learned. It's just the way it is. See, I'm just trying to be all just serious. Embrace it. Just don't worry like... about it. I knew it was going to be horrible to try and be serious with you on here. I just knew it was because I laugh at you. You laugh at me. And we're just going to be sitting here like a bunch of hyenas. So. Oh, yes. All righty. Yes, welcome, everyone, to the Green Woodworker podcast. Today, we are honored to have as a special guest, Mr. Matt Cremona. I know many of you folks know who this young guy is. He's a extremely hard worker, super guy, awesome husband and father of two strapping young boys that oh, yeah one of them at least is like the crawling around things i can't wait to see the second one crawling around <laughs> with him all over the top of the tables but here we go with mr mac cremona all the way from the great up north up there and uh, how you doing brother how's it going i'm doing really well happy whatever you care what day it is you care what the, the listeners know what day it is it's friday everybody that's right it's friday i don't care what I don't care if they know because it's Friday and Friday is Friday, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so how you been, man? You've been uh, obviously working hard as usual, uh, staying busy yeah. on the mill. That thing has been uh, has been something, hasn't it? Yeah, now that it's actually you know working, I try and get out there like well, once a week. I try to get out there. It's nice to be outside and doing something out there. And the fact that it's actually like to the point where it's usable now, it's kind of exciting. Nice. So I'm I'm. I'm kind of pacing myself because I still have a lot of other things I got to do, but you know that's kind of like my fun time, my fun day of the week is right. just messing around up there. Right. Yeah, it's uh, that thing's incredible for for anybody who's listening uh, that may not know who Matt is. I will definitely in the show notes there will be more links uh, to everything that Matt does. But Matt built an incredibly huge, <laughs> massive uh, bandsaw mill. Um, and the cut capacity on this thing is 60 something, 70 inches or close to that. And it is, yeah. it's an incredible thing. He did it in a relatively short amount of time in, uh, the dead of winter, basically yeah. for not knowing anything, what I was doing. I think it did pretty well for the timing. Absolutely, man. I mean, <laughs> it, it, very, very impressive build. So you have to go check out Matt's videos. Um, he has a full series on the build from, picking up the steel to making the first cut it's just it's an incredible feat for several people let alone one guy <laughs> one guy who weighs less than one of the beams so That's you true. know it's it's uh it's definitely incredible but you know man one thing one thing i really want to ask you about is how do you stay so enthusiastic about getting out there and and you know it's it's 20 degrees outside and you know snows everywhere but yet you get out there with a good attitude and and great content and you just continue to push forward what what does that for you what makes you get out there and do that um probably the, the thing that probably helps me the most is the fact that i'm filming it and i'm kind of i'm trying to share the experience with people so Part of what I do is the entertainment value. So it's like, here's this crazy guy who's outside in the freezing, cold, in the snow, doing all these crazy things. Um, I figured people will probably get, probably get a good laugh out of it. And I get a good laugh out of them getting a good laugh out of it. So it's, it's kind of like this reciprocal thing that is kind of, I don't know, it's just kind of fun. And the fact that, you know, I can, I, it's my decision to go out there and do that myself instead of someone telling me to go out there and do it. That's kind of a nice feeling, too. So I kind of have that whole freedom of, you know, I'm, I work for myself. And I'm telling myself to go out there and do it. So it's kind of a different feeling than your boss telling you to go shovel snow or do something in the cold or whatever. Yeah, that does make sense. That makes complete sense because, you know, I mean, with what you're doing, if you get out there for 10 minutes and think that, okay, it's a little too cold right now. I'll wait a couple hours. You can easily go in and do what you want to do. Um, you know, 
you're obviously a very talented guy. Your, your furniture speaks for itself. Everything that you build speaks for itself because the design and the, and the skill that you put into the mill that you have never touched, you did a little bit of welding. I mean, we can watch you, we can watch you on your YouTube channel learn how to weld with a cracker box welder. That's what the old Lincoln welders are called <laughs> down here anyway. Yes. <laughs> and, and we watched you learn how to weld on your trailer that you bought. Mm -hmm. Yep. And within a few short weeks or months later, you're building this monstrosity. Um, so your, you know, your attention to detail is, is really second to none. And that is something that I know a lot of people, including myself, admire about you do. And you do all of this in the name of content creation, because yeah. that's what you are now. You're a content creator. Do you ever wish that um, that it would be easy for you to say, because I know you don't sell any of your pieces or anything like that, but do you ever think, man, I wish I could just build furniture and sell furniture or are you happy being strictly a content creator and making the things that you need anyway? I know you don't just make things just to make them. You, you physically make <laughs> uh, things that you need. Sometimes. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying though. I mean, yeah. like, you know, the armoires and the, and the beds and the things that you make, those are things that you need that your kids are going to have for generations to come. Do you feel like sometimes possibly that it would just, if it were easier, would you rather do the woodworking versus the content creation or does that ever mm, enter your mind at all? Not particularly. Uh, the, the thing that I love about content creation is the fact that the things I'm making is a secondary to the actual product, which is the content. So, in a sense, the the furniture I make is, from a business standpoint, it's a waste product. I need to get rid of it. So I just happen to get rid of it by putting it in my my home. But um, it's kind of like the sawdust you make in your shop. It's a byproduct of you know whatever you're making. But no, I don't really. I really enjoy the content creation. Although I would get a lot more projects built if I wasn't filming them all the time. But you know that's all right. That's that's the trade off. But I really enjoy the content creation because it allows me to connect with you know, so many people and help a lot of people with their own woodworking. And it's just, it's a really fulfilling thing to do. I just really enjoy it because it's, it's, I'm in the service industry. I'm really just like helping people all the time and providing some value to people, whether it just be entertainment or informational, you know, it's, it's all good. I, I just absolutely love it. I love that side of it. Yeah. Oh, and, 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 and we love that you love that side of it because it is, it is, it's motivational. It's, and the techniques and the things that we learn, you know, people would have to pay um, a lot of money, you know, the free, the free videos that you provide. And when I say free, I mean free to the viewer. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people don't understand or don't realize that the sacrifice and the amount of money that is spent producing videos for YouTube, it is not a cheap <laughs> venture being a content creator. Uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of a... Uh... Uh, startup cost and ongoing Absolutely. reinvesting cost. Yeah, you know, because it's it's kind of like your tools also because you know you get this six inch joiner and that thing works really nice. You get a T3 camera and it works really good, but then three months later they come out with a I TI5 camera and they come out with a seven inch joiner or an eight inch <laughs> joiner and then it's just like anything. You know everything progresses, and unfortunately the camera equipment you know gets it gets way more expensive than the tools do to, after a certain extent. It just, it's, it's crazy. You know, cameras yeah. are. As of, as of this week, my video camera is now the single most expensive thing in my shop. Yes. More expensive than any tool I own. When any I of them. saw that, when I saw that camera, I was so <laughs> excited. I said, man, that, whew, that's some really good stuff. So I'm glad you were able to upgrade and I'm, and I'm glad that things are starting to be able to hopefully and afford you that, that, luxury because in the end the person who benefits the most from that is the viewer oh yes whether, whether it's the viewer on youtube or the viewers um that watch your projects on the wood whisper guild which is something i haven't touched on yet which is a phenomenal you know i'm a huge fan of it i'll just go ahead and say that right now yeah, i know i love it thanks for like one of the only people who comments Fr from the beginning <laughs> of your first one uh your first project with the wood whisper uh, Guild has just been phenomenal, and the learning for the price, whether you build the projects or not, is is 
you're talking tens of thousands of dollars of value. It's it's crazy because you get to just continuously you could watch one move, one method over and over and over and practice with it and work right next to it. So it's it's something that's very, very well. And once again, all these uh, all these places I'm talking about will be in the description of the uh, podcast because it's something folks need to check out. Y you bundle together certain prices and get in on a few projects, man, and it's just it's really good stuff. It's kind of like where the video, in a sense, like when you're watching a YouTube video, if you're like me and you go, man, if there was just a li if there was a little <laughs> more time, a little bit more. And that's kind of where this picks up. You know what I mean? That's, it, that's a good way to put it. I'm sorry. That's a really good way to put it. I like that. Yeah. It, it's kind of like you wanting, you want just a little bit more and then boom, there it is right there in the guild. So it's, you know, like I said, it's, it's a really awesome service that's provided. And I think it's, uh, I think it's awesome. Since I'm talking about you doing so many things, I mean, you do, you do a podcast <laughs> with two other guys on wood talk you do you do your own content creating you do um the wood whisper guild you do you have two children you have a wife you have a family you have and there's still only 24 hours in the day at your address right uh, you i i think so i think i'm out of the my 25th hour might be coming in soon i think i i ordered that a few years ago <laughs> i got you hey well i could borrow some of that so what is there anything that that um what is your thought process of of just that keeps you going how do you is it organization is it is it scheduling is it how how are you able to do so much in a day you know i'm not actually that all that sure and i'll tell you what is definitely not organization if anyone's ever seen my shop i'm not an organized person <laughs> um it's definitely I have it all in my mind of things I need to do, and a lot of the times it's just sit, sitting down and it's kind of cranking through it. Um, I try, I tr like, I kind of go back and forth on this, but I do try to set a daily goal um, at the beginning of the week, a goal for every day of like the major things I want to accomplish on those days, so I can kind of at least get some kind of um, schedule or I don't know workflow to my work to my work week. Right. Um, otherwise, because like you could, I could literally sit down on my computer and just like sit there and you know answer comments, answer email, you know, do a little bit of editing, do whatever. And you can get, you can do that. And you can kind of go in all these different directions. But if you don't stay focused on what you're trying to accomplish, you really won't move forward. So that's that's really the hardest thing for me because if I don't set those goals, I'll end up sitting on my computer answering email for like the entire day, and it's just like that's something I have to do. But could that be done like? in the hour between when like my nanny leaves and my wife gets home and I'm just watching the boys. Yeah, I could probably do that then. So I kind of, I kind of have some tasks that I schedule for those times and that kind of helps too. Um, just kind of keep on top of everything. Cause there's a lot of little things that I have to do every single day. And then there's the big, big things. So right. it's kind of find that balance and kind of trying to schedule things a little bit. And yeah. then of course, trying to get, trying to squeeze as much time out of your day is probably the, um, the biggest one. Yeah. So I work. I just changed my schedule again because my wife went back to work. But I was working nights again and days. But now I'm back to working days, um, mornings, afternoons. So that's my first shift. And then when the kids and my wife go to bed around you know nine or ten, I'll get another two to three hours in before I go to bed at night. So wow. You know you try and get some time here and there wherever that's you can. Incredible. And then the weekends, if we're not doing anything on the weekends, the kids are sleeping or, you know. Lindsay wants to take the boys somewhere. I got some time there to work as well. So it's really whenever we have, have the opportunity to, you can you can work. But having a, a day the day and age we live in now, where like you can literally do just about everything from your phone, I'm never not working. Right. It's, it's kind of nice and kind of <laughs> bad at the same time because it does help me keep up with the small stuff like right. social media and a little bit of email. But at the same time, it's like, well, no, I'm always doing something. Yeah. It's very I, weird. I try to. I tell my wife sometimes, I say, you know, I want to comment on Matt's videos because I know it helps things and it keeps, but that's just one more person he has to answer. And I'm like, you know, no, those, I, are the, those are the quick ones. I understand. I understand. <laughs> and it's, and you know, I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to converse with him because that's just one more person to slow him down. But, <laughs> you know, so, so doing all that you do every day, and I know this answer may be obvious, it may be simple, but what could you, could you attribute how hard you work to 
to one thing or to a couple of things that maybe motivate you to continue to keep doing what you're doing the way you're doing it? I uh, just, I love it. So it's not work, I guess, gotcha. which is kind of weird. Like if you had asked me about that, like when I was working a day job, it, or like, you know, traditional employment it would be a different answer probably. Um, but now it's just, I'm just working hard to achieve my own goals and do what I love. So it's not like, you know, I said I work all the time, but it's like, I literally get to have fun all the time. I think my wife sometimes is a little bit, she feels a little bit of, um, jealousy there because it's like, I get to have fun for a living. Right. You know, it's like my job is to like go play outside and cut up logs and like hang out in the shop. That's it's, my job. It's amazing. <laughs> It's amazing, no matter how much money we make, if we're at a place we don't want to be making a thousand dollars an hour and we're unhappy, it's just funny how that's just no good, is it? It's oh, just, yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? It is. It really, really is. Uh, when I was, when I lost my job and I went like job hunting, um, the jobs we're looking at, the salaries were a lot higher than the previous job I was working because I was at a startup, so the salaries were lower there. But, so I, I traded off, like, I don't know, like the starting salaries of those jobs, were like 60 to 70, 80,000 a year, and then I started making $300 a month doing YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, there's, there's that thing. So you but, math teachers wouldn't have been proud of you, is what you're trying to say. <laughs> I took a huge risk. <laughs> but you know, it's... It, but, it's paid but off. The, the person who takes the biggest re risk is always the person that gets the rewards, man. It, it is. It's the people That's who, true. the people who stay hard at it, the people who stay motivated, and realize that they're finally working towards their dreams and their family's dreams, versus building the dreams of someone else's. Because that's what you're doing. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with conventional jobs or anything like that. But the bottom line is, is this. Unless you're working for your dream and your future, you're working for somebody else's. Mm -hmm. And that's the bottom line. And I don't know if it hurts somebody's feelings. I'm sorry, but that's just the truth. I have made a lot of people a lot of money. And <laughs> after 46 years of being alive and probably 35 years of working my butt off, I'm finally going, hang on a minute. Maybe it's time to start doing something for myself. You know what I mean? So... Mm -hmm. You, you did a good thing, and I'm glad that everything worked out the way it did for you. And it didn't work out by happenstance. It worked out because you worked, it, because you continue to work, and because you be, continue to produce great content that people enjoy. They, they enjoy you. They enjoy the way you show things. Um, the last thing I want to touch on real quick is, you know, there are a lot of people who want to do what you do. There are a lot of people who want to be full-time makers or full-time content creators or builders and we both know that that's not an easy life it's not an easy thing to do it can be comfortable and you can make a living at it far be it a living that you would in a corporate world but <laughs> there are some people well, really, you never know there are some people doing that's what i was getting ready to say <laughs> there's some people doing really really well and 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 i think you're doing really well and yours is just beginning you you were just I feel like you're at the beginning of where you're getting ready to go. I think you're going to rock it off into space. And at least I can say I knew you back in the day. You know what I mean? Before you got too big to talk to me. So, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, for those folks who, who don't know anything about building or do know a few things about stuff, you know, I know the biggest thing that everybody says, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? And everybody says, well, you just need to start. And that's kind of elementary in a sense of, okay, that really doesn't give any kind of direction whatsoever. Do you have any suggestions for anyone other than the word just start? I mean, do you have any, and I know you can't be specific because you don't know what people want to do, but could you possibly give an example of somebody or could you just maybe ex explain what someone could do to get out there and possibly get things going? Any ideas? Ah, uh, you know, that start thing is pretty good because a lot of people who want to get into the content creation, they want to get into, I don't know, I guess video content creation like I do for the most part. Um, most people aren't really used to talking to a camera or 
um, organizing thoughts into a concise and clear manner or having a good idea of how much time is spent on a topic, when to move on, how many examples to give. So it, it's definitely a lot of practice, but one thing you can really do is look at the successful people, the ones that are, if you think about the style of video you want to do, or the style of content you want to produce, there's only, you know, there's a few, you know, pretty common standard styles. Take a look at the one that you want to do, the person making those videos, and try and emulate that at least a little bit. You know, if you're making a video about the same a same kind of topic, and it's like three times as long as the other video of this person you really look up to, you're probably spending too much time on something, or something, or maybe your video is just that good. But if you're the one thing, one of the things I learned early on was how to know or like when to make the decision of when to just cut or like when to stop talking or when to cut myself off because video is very interesting because it's like if you're standing there talking to someone for half an hour about something half an hour doesn't seem like much you sit down you see half hour runtime on a video you know like this better be good <laughs> <laughs> exactly so you have so to be able to keep that attention span or you have to keep the attention of the viewer right. is probably the biggest thing so if somebody wants to be a content creator, one of the things they could do is take their phone out into their garage or their shop or wherever and start practicing. Start practicing being a content creator. If you want to be a content creator, if you want to be a person that builds furniture for a living, practice building furniture for a living. That's what you need to do to start. You choose what you want to do, even if it's, even if it's a, um, a wide open field. You say, well, I want to be a maker. Okay, well, then go get a hobby kit and start making something. Start building something. Start doing something other than just sitting around. Um, you know, because I was talking to a guy the other day who used to be a foreman for a, a concrete company. And he's always kind of been into the trades and things like that. And he was kind of telling me that a lot of people always look down on people in the trades and things like that. And I know a lot of people who own construction companies and businesses that may not be a big corporate business, but they, you know, they have a few employees and stuff. Those guys are doing really, really well. So, you know, don't ever frown upon anybody in the trades or anything like that. I've, we're going to be in trouble in this country if more people don't start becoming more hands-on in the trades or, or the, oh, building, yeah. you know, we're going to be <laughs> in a situation because, I mean, what are we going to do? Where are we going to live? What are we going to drive? What are we going to, you know, who's going to farm, who's going to make the machinery for the farms. There's a long list of things, right? So just get out there, get your hands dirty, and basically get started doing something. Doing something is better than doing nothing, right? I totally agree. And you might not, you know, the thing about practicing is you're probably not going to get it the first time. You're probably going to fail along the way. But as long as you learn from those mistakes as long as you you know you, you pivot and you make those adjustments to get to your successful point then the journey is definitely worth it right because your first video that you filmed was was perfect correct oh god no no one's seen it so how long <laughs> so you filmed a video and you never put it up right oh yeah i filmed the video i started doing videos uh, like five years before i actually posted my first one five years before you posted your first video yeah, I was I would I was like I I think this would be like everyone is now like it'd be really cool to post videos on the internet. No one was really doing it back then, but um, I'm like oh let's get my camera. How hard could that be? Just sit there and talk to the camera for a bit. Oh, it was so bad. It was so <laughs> so bad. So every I did that a few times. I took the camera out. I'm like let me try now. Let me see if it's any better. And it wasn't. Every single time it wasn't better. And then finally when I started the videos, started posting the videos so you can see now on my channel, I was like. You know what? Screw it. Doesn't matter. I'm just gonna get out there and I'll just figure it out and I'll practice. I'm not gonna get any better at it if I don't practice. Um, so it was more of like a ultimatum kind of thing. Like I'm gonna do this now or never. And uh, here we are now, I guess. Absolutely. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. And that's exactly the whole point, man. Get out there, practice a little bit, and don't be scared or afraid to get your hands dirty and to fail a little bit, because Learn something from your failures, move forward, and and life is good. You know what I mean? Enjoy your life. Don't let it be stressful because you made a little bad recording or you screwed a screw in crooked or something doesn't <laughs> look exactly the way you want it to look. 
learn from your mistakes, move forward and move on. You know, that's, that's just the whole bottom line. And I think if a lot more people took the approach to what you said about just getting out there five years later, finally decided putting a video on, that's a big, that's a big span and, and still to continue to stay on track. You know what I mean? Within a five year period, a lot of people just would have said, okay, this isn't for me. <laughs> it's time to, it's time to move on. And I'm sure glad that you decided not to move on. I'm glad you decided to stick with it and, and stay with where you are. And that's just a lesson for people listening. Just stay with it and things will, things will be okay. <laughs> just stay with it. It'll all be all right. You know what I mean? So, brother, you know, brother, I appreciate all the great words of wisdom that you've given us today. You've, you've provided a lot of information um, to help people just realize that Things are going to be the way they are. You work around them, you work through them, you work hard, and you'll get to where you want to go. I truly, truly appreciate you being with me with me here today, man. I do. No, I my pleasure. You a lot. I really appreciate your videos, and I appreciate your enthusiasm. It keeps me going. Um, every time I see a video, I get excited, and I want to continue <laughs> my quest forward in what I do. And I just really can't thank you enough, Mr. Matt Cremona. We will see you guys next time on the Green Woodworker Podcast. Thank you again, my man. Thanks for having me, Donnie. Yes, sir. Thank you.